This session will be a continu continuation of the uh, other segment. We will start with the lower anterior teeth. And the lower anterior teeth, uh, all principles are exactly the same, uh, with the exception of changing the uh, direction of the beam and the direction of the film. Because of the short mesiodistal uh, or narrow mesiodistal uh, uh, dimension of the lower anterior teeth, you can accommodate the four centrals, so centrals and laterals in a single film. However, canines, just like in the upper jaw, should be done uh, separately because they fall, just like in the upper teeth, they fall in the, uh, or they are situated at the angle of the mandible. So they, it's difficult to accommodate them with a, uh, properly with an image that is taken for the lower centrals or laterals and for the premolars. So better go for a separate film for the lower center, uh, for the lower anterior, uh, for the lower, lower canines. So here, uh, the film, as you will see in, uh, in, uh, uh, from the side, the film is exposed from the exposure side always, whether it's a film or a sensor, and it's going to be introduced into the oral cavity in, in this manner. You again tilt the film and utilize the space inside the oral cavity. Don't try to touch anything in the way. And uh, 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 once you're there, flip the film down, extended below the tongue, Okay, gently, never mention the tongue to the patient, and you extend the film two millimeters above, above here, because we're working in the lower, you extend it two millimeters above the incisal margin. So at the end, you will have uh, a, a complete coverage of the apex as well as the crowns. Okay, so this is the first step. The second step is you support the film after you feel it's okay, uh, uh, properly, properly placed inside the oral cavity and you guide again the patient's finger so that the patient, you guide the patient to uh, hold the film in its proper position. Same rules are followed, keeping the two millimeters. The uh, support is against the crown, not in the center of the film, and all unused fingers are rolled away from the, uh, from the uh, uh, radiation. This is for the film position. Of course, we tell the patient not to move, and then we're going to uh, expose or direct the beam. Uh, it's said, uh, just like in the uh, previous video, if you're going from down upwards, then you are in the negative angulation, and this is for the mandibular uh, teeth. And if you're going from up down, this is a positive vertical angulation, and it's used for the uh, maxillary teeth. So, our point of entrance in this uh, area will be uh, a line extended you remember, we use this in the upper anterior teeth, centrals and laterals. In this, we're going to extend the, uh, the uh, line from the tip of the nose downwards to the chin. And this is our point of entrance. So our point of entrance will be directed at the chin. Now next, we will deal with the angulations. In the angulations, just like in the uh, uh, upper central incisors, first of all, you know your angulation of the lower uh, incisors, and now you can see the film, how it is uh, inclined inside the oral cavity. So first of all, you direct the film, uh, sorry, the cone perpendicular on the tooth, and he, here you will have reduced vertical angulation, and this will lead to uh, elongated image. Uh, on the other hand, if you extend it too much downwards, perpendicular on the film, you will have a short image. So you direct it first perpendicular on the tooth, and then you direct it to the perp uh, perpendicular to the uh, uh, sensor, okay? And then you will direct it uh, midway. <coughs> Sorry, uh, uh, you direct it midway between those two extremes, not perpendicular on the tooth, 
not perpendicular on the film, but it is perpendicular on the bisector. Here you will get an angle of al almost minus, minus 40 because the uh, beam is directed upwards. Okay, so this is for the vertical angulation. Vertical angulation adjusted. Here, because we're working on a mannequin, see the finger has moved. Uh, uh, in, 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 in real life, let's say, the patient should be holding uh, the film all uh, uh, the process, through all the process. Now, the next uh, thing that you will take care of is how to direct the beam properly so that it will be perpendicular on the uh, buccal surface of teeth. So, with the vertical angulation being fixed, we direct our beam so that it will be perpendicular on the uh, buccal surface of teeth. See, if you come from this direction, or from this direction, either way you will have overlapping images of, uh, uh, of the contact points. You don't want this. What you want is that you, you need to have separated contact points, and this is only achieved when you direct your beam perpendicular on the buccal surface of teeth, not on the tooth. I'm not talking about the vert uh, vertical angulation now. I'm talking about this movement. Vertical angulation has been adjusted by being placed perpendicular on the bisector. Point of entrance, vertical angulation, horizontal angulation, we come to the last thing, which is the complete coverage of the film. And again, just like the same rule that we have followed, is that we will include this margin, the free margin of the, of the film, or the sensor to be in line with the, uh, uh, with the, with the outer rim of the, uh, um, uh, 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 of the con, so that I will have complete coverage. Here you will have uh, incomplete coverage, incomplete coverage, even if you extend it up or down, either, uh, either of these in which movements, either of these movements you will have, you will not have the relationship <coughs> that we stated earlier, which is this relationship. Any movement, uh, uh, any uh, 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 course or any position of the uh, film of the cone in which the film is not completely covered, then the uh, uh, tooth uh, or the image will not be shown. So this is, see, I will I make this flush with the uh, outer rim of the, uh, 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 of the uh, film. And then you do your exposure, then you're going, you're going to reverse everything. You, ask, you hold the film, you ask the patient to remove his finger, and then you take the film uh, outside of the oral cavity. It happens sometimes that you cannot extend the film down too much uh, due to uh, uh, any reason, like for in cases of tongue tie or something. So you, you can use the film in this way. See? going to compensate, I almost make it flat, and I again instruct the patient to hold the film. Now here, this is the uh, perpendicular on the tooth, uh, but I have to increase the angle so that it will be perpendicular on the, uh, uh, on the uh, film. See, the angle is more, so I'm going to take it uh, direct at the bisector. He, here it's it's uh, a more than, it's almost uh, 45, minus 45 upwards of uh, vertical angulation. So what you can do is, if you know the tooth and you know the angle of your sensor, then you're going to compensate. First, start perpendicular on the tooth. Second, start, go the, to the extreme. Be, uh, try to be perpendicular on the, uh, on the film. And then when you know those two, maximum ends of the movement of the cone, then you're going to direct it perpendicular on the imaginary bisector that you have calculated from those two extremes.